bit different now, now that my heart's been found. Nothing really feels the same. I hold my head a bit higher. I lift my voice a bit louder. Yes, yeah, something inside has changed. I am a mountain mover, water walker, more than just an overcomer. been redeemed. I am a believer. I know this is not my home. I know I don't walk alone. No matter what comes my way. I have peace through the trouble. Welcome on this beautiful day to Community United Methodist Church's Sundays in the Park. It is so good to see everyone here. And for those of you watching at home and later, hello, good to see you too. It's Independence Day weekend, 4th of July. Celebration. For some people, though, they're a little frustrated with our country. That's okay, because today we're gonna to remind ourselves that we are in fact dual citizens. Not only do we belong to this country and this world, but we also belong to the kingdom of God. And we are gonna celebrate that today. Now, just a few pieces of business before we keep going. Um, if you don't have a worship folder, look for somebody who's passing them out in the back. You'll need these to follow along and sing all the words for the songs. And we have attendance pads that will be going around. It's very important that everyone try to sign in because I'm in charge of attendance. So I really like it when I know everybody was here. Um, so those are gonna be circulating. Please pass them around to each other throughout the service. Thank you. And now I would ask Pastor Hannah to come up and lead us in prayer. Let us pray. Oh, gracious and loving God, we are so thankful for this opportunity to gather under the beautiful sky, under the trees and in the shade uh, with friendly faces to worship you and pray together and sing praises to you. We are so grateful for your beauty, your creation and the world in which we live. And as we offer our celebrations and also at the same time as we share our challenges uh, of living in this world, 
be with us and in this worship we pray that all that we offer and all that we pray will ride in your spirit and through this worship may we be renewed and may we be filled with your spirit and your presence so that we will be strengthened to go forth from this place to share your love and to live following Jesus' path. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We bring the kingdom here on earth. Let's have an act of love right now. Let us stand and find each other and greet our community. Please rise.
So I'm wondering if anybody here has ever taken a trip to another town. Yes, maybe? I had to leave my town that I live in just to come to church today. Did you? I think maybe one of you did. So I'm wondering, have you ever left the state and gone on a trip to another place? Or maybe did you even leave the country sometime? Mm. Okay, so when our family goes on a road trip, we do this thing when we cross into a new state, okay? And I have to move the microphone, but I think everybody's going to figure out what we say. Like when we cross into Michigan, we go like this. We go, Michigan! right? Or maybe we say, yeah. <laughs> right? Or wherever you're going. Do you guys do something like that sometimes? No? Okay, well, we got to liven up your road trips here, my friends. Okay, so when we go to a new place, we like greet it and we're like, yay, we're here, right? <laughs> yeah, you know what? You can talk to Connor about that little special thing later, Tyler. Um, <clears throat> so when we go someplace new, we greet it by saying hello. So I'm wondering, when you got to church today, did you go, <gasps> church? No, you didn't. Why is everybody laughing? Did, they didn't say that either? Oh my goodness. You know what? Sometimes when we go places, we even can say something like peace or hello, right? There's lots of ways to greet. Oh, <laughs> there's lots of ways to give a greeting. Stone's ready to give new greetings too, right? We all want to give special kinds of greetings. Well, in today's Bible story, you guys, they actually say peace as a greeting. That's what they do. Just like we said peace to say hello to everybody, they said peace in the Bible story. They were told when you get to somebody's house or when you get to a new town, say peace to this house. And then if back to you, then you know that they are ready to maybe share a story about God or say a prayer with you. And if they don't say peace back to you, you know, they're not ready to hear the prayer. And you know what I thought? I was like, well, that's kind of like when we say peace to each other, like we just did, or we say hello. Sometimes, does somebody come up to you and say, hi, how are you? And you're like, I'm not ready for a hug, right? Maybe. Or they say, oh, hello, and they want to give you a fist bump, and you're like, mm, not in the mood today. Do you ever feel like that sometimes? Yeah, and that's okay. But sometimes you're like, hi, and you're ready to give a hug or a high five or a welcome. And so that's what's so interesting about saying peace to somebody. It's a way of saying, are you ready to hear my story? Are you ready to be welcome? And then I started thinking, sometimes we get to say, mm, not right now, not quite yet, but sometimes we have to be ready for other people not to hear our stories sometimes too, right? We have to be ready to just be like, they don't want to be welcomed in the same way that I want to welcome them. But we know that we are all still part of this kingdom of God. We are all still part of this group, even if they're not ready to hear it yet, even if they're not ready to share in the story the same way we want to share the story, we are all still part of this family together, right? So I'm wondering, is it okay for us to pray together right now? Do you think we can do that? Let's pray together. Please help us remember to look for peace and kindness when we meet someone new. 
Remind us to find the right times to share stories with each other. Thank you for giving us words of peace to show that we are in this together. Amen. Today's reading is from Luke chapter 10, verses 1 through 11. After this, Jesus appointed 72 others and sent them on ahead in pairs to every town and place he intended to visit. He said to them, The harvest is rich, but the workers are few. Therefore, ask the overseer to send workers to the harvest. Be on your way, and remember, I am sending you as lambs in the midst of wolves. Don't carry a walking stick or a knapsack, wear no sandals, and greet no one along the way. And whatever house you enter, first say, Peace be upon this house. If the people live peaceably, <clears throat> peaceably there, your peace will rest on them. If not, it will come back to you. Stay in that house, eating and drinking what they give you, for the laborer is worth a wage. Don't keep moving from house to house. And whatever city you enter, after they welcome you, eat what they have set before you. And heal those who are sick in that town. Say to them, the reign of God has drawn near to you. If the people of any town you enter don't welcome you, go into its streets and say, we shake the dust out of this town from our feet as testimony against you. But know that the reign of God has drawn near. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we are grateful for this time of reflection. As we meditate on your word and reflect in our lives and think through the Bible story and our lives together, be with us and we pray that all our thoughts and prayers in this time will be acceptable to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. It's so good to be out here in the park, right? It was, it's wonderful. Uh, I was at the Trader Joe grocery store the other day and I wanted to buy some food items, but I also needed to go to the bathroom. I know it's a very nice place to go to the bathroom at Trader Joe's. So I went into the store and picked up a few things and parked my car outside the bathroom. Uh, and I, when I got out of the bathroom, I got my cart back, of course, and went through another aisle. And at the end of the aisle, I picked up another food item and tried to put it in my cart. Then I saw blueberries, bread, and other things I didn't buy. So like, uh, what are all these? <laughs> I quickly realized that it was someone else's cart. <laughs> so I hurried back to the bathroom area, and there, a young mother and a girl, little girl, was doing the same gesture. Like, what's happening? <laughs> and I said, I'm sorry. And I, uh, they said it was totally OK. So, and soon everything was good. But just for a few seconds, I was confused. Have you been in such a situation? A moment of confusion due to perhaps a switched grocery carts, or switched suitcases, or jackets, or hats? Do you, have you ever gone out of the church with someone else's jacket? <laughs> that happened to me. Um, when two things look similar, it's so easy to get them mistaken. And I'm wondering if it's true with the two kingdoms in which we live as Christians. So what are these two kingdoms? What am I talking about? And I think earlier Amy talked about dual citizenship, and I think that's really, it's, it's a wonderful expression. Because the first kingdom, our first citizenship is of our country or this world, we can say. It's our socio-political, economic, and geographic kingdom. We call it nation or society or city. Uh, and kingdom, we know that it's an old concept now, but it was a common reference in biblical times. And then the second kingdom in which we live as Christians is the kingdom of God. So uh, it's a different kind of kingdom, right? Some of our modern Bible versions translate it as reign of God, as the inclusive version uh, does, and th that's what we use in our worship. 
And it's because the kingdom that image the world can evoke the historical images of tyranny, unilateral rules, and patriarchal or male dominance. And s since such oppressive images of king or kingdoms can be in the way of really understanding the community that Jesus dreamed about, we may say that the reign of God instead of kingdom, but whether we translate it as kingdom or reign, the original Greek word for this uh, concept used in the New Testament is basileia. So let's think about it, basileia. What did Jesus mean when he talked about basileia? What did early church meant and they dreamed about when they were talking about basileia, God's basileia? Christian theologian Walter Wink in his book, The Powers That Be, highlights that Basileia is used by early Christian writers to mean a new world order, exemplify the life and ministry and death and resurrection of Jesus. And it is very contrasted with the existing world or order of that time, which was the Roman Empire, right? It is um, used to really contrast Roman Empire empirical power and God's, God's rule, God's reign, God's kingdom, uh, or any other monarchy or empire as people knew it. For Jesus and the early church, Basileia embodied God's love. It was an egalitarian and inclusive community where all people are welcome. So in God's Basileia, children were no longer considered to be seen but not to be heard. Rather, was embraced and their ideas and suggestions were valued. Remember the story of the five loaves and two fish and remember in John's gospel it was a little kid's suggestion that really started the miracle. So their ideas are valued and in God's Basileia women were no longer considered incapable of learning um, so that they can go to educational, uh, have the opportunities, but they were invited to sit at the feet of the rabbi along with the male disciples. And we hear the story of uh, Mary and Martha and other female disciples who followed Jesus and to learn scripture and to hear Jesus' te teaching. In Basileia, Samaritans, or the so-called Gentiles, or foreigners, were no longer considered impure or unclean or dirty, but rather invited to eat at the same table with the Jews and with everyone. In God's Basileia, the slaves were no longer considered merely as a possession of their owners, but were baptized in the same water just like all the other free people. Can you how radical that would have been in the early church? It's the same baptism, same water, regardless of what class you belong to in the society. So God's Basileia reflected the dream community of Jesus, and that is the kingdom of God that Jesus is talking about. And it's where people were taught to love the enemies. When the tradition said, eye for an eye. And it's where relationships were transformed. All kinds of illnesses were healed. New life was emerging. No wonder that a central message of Jesus was that God's Basileia was coming near, drawing near. In our uh, Bible translation, we said the reign of God was, God was drawing near. Uh, and this was the the very first message that Jesus did, according to Mark uh, chapter 1, that the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. And Jesus taught about the kingdom of God through parables. He said, it's like a mustard seed. It's small, but it grows big. It's like a hidden treasure, or it's like a, a merchant looking for fine pearls. And taught over and over again, seek ye first the kingdom of God and righteousness, and all other things will come unto you. And he invited, let the little children come to me, because it is to such as these little children, the kingdom of God belongs. And more than anything else, when we pray the Lord's Prayer every week, or some of us do it every day, we say, your kingdom come, your reign come, uh, your uh, your presence will be here. And in today's passage from Luke, 
we hear that uh, Jesus sent out these people, right, uh, 70 or 72, and in our lectionary group, somebody mentioned it's like uh, Jesus sent out the marketing team first before he went and shared the, uh, the words of peace and preached, proclaimed the kingdom of God has come near. That was their core message of Jesus, and that was the core message that Jesus taught his uh, marketing team to share. So it was a good news for them, good news for people who suffered colonialism, poverty, slavery, gender inequality, and racial discrimination. And in their experience of multiple layers of oppression, the images of Basileia offered a new vision, new reality. And we hear this today. So how is it still the good news for us today that the kingdom of God is coming close? It is good news for you. How it is good news for our society? How do we share? And I think it is a tremendously powerful news for us today. So our nation, um, United States, we celebrate 4th of July this weekend, right? Um, so I don't know if you know that the United States um, is called, do you know how, how U.S. is, is uh, translated in Korean or Chinese? Anybody knows? So in Korean, it's miguk, um, and in Chinese, it's called meiko, and both meaning, the meanings uh, is, do you know what the meaning would be? Have any idea? It means a beautiful country. So mei, beautiful, go country, so beautiful country. That's how, um, you know, it is translated in some languages, right? Um, and it is a beautiful country, right? Uh, you know, I talked about going to the Rockies recently, and it's so touched, it's just um, so full of wonder and amazement and just God's presence. We have lakes, mountains, fields, and desert, and it's, it is a beautiful, beautiful country. And at the same time, we recognize that the, our social realities are not always beautiful. I'm thinking about just recently what happened three migrants who were trapped and died in the trailer in um, Texas. And, and they were somebody's mother's fathers and somebody's children from Mexico, Guatemala, Honduras, and El Salvador. And when we hear news like that, it really breaks our hearts. And, and where's our humanity, right? We wonder. Um, and then last, just last week, there was another shooting in the loop and it was very near where my daughter works. Her, um, her office is right, right a few blocks from there. And, uh, and of course, whenever shooting happens, people die. It really um, is, is terrible, and you don't want that to happen. But when you know that that's the area where your loved one is uh, or goes every day, it really affects you uh, profoundly. And we know that in our country, our medical system is so dysfunctional and it disheartens many citizens. And um, we, we know that we need God's, God's basileia here, right now, in this place, in our world. So we know that 4th of July weekend, we have both uh, celebrations, a lot to celebrate, um, about freedom, our uh, leaders, and what we have achieved, a lot to celebrate, and there are a lot of challenges. So we recognize that we live, really live in two kingdoms, two reigns, or two basileia. And as I think about it, I ran into uh, the reading of uh, Shane Claiborne. She, he's the one who wrote Jesus for President. And some of you may know that he's the one who uh, created the movement of collecting uh, guns and weapons uh, of murder and just just welded into and, and make it into plowshare. Um, uh, but but in, in this writing, he talks about alternative 4th of July celebration. And he writes how we as a church have a new calendar uh, with new holidays, not just the uh, festivals of the Caesars, he says. Uh, so 4th of July as part of Festival of Caesars. And he reminds us that our social body uh, as Christians was born not on 4th of July, but on Pentecost 
So we have two calendars, right? And our heroes are not just kings and presidents and war heroes, but our heroes include martyrs, the saints, and all those women and men who have embodied love and grace and the goodness of God in the world. And he reminds us that the word, uh, the vote, right? We, we just voted uh, last week. So the vote comes from the same root as the word devotion or votive, like devotion, like prayer, or votive candles, a uh, candle as the symbol of Christ's presence in the world. Um, and it was just very uh, thoughtfully written in such a way that as we, uh, I mean, I'm going to go to fight, see fireworks tomorrow, right? I'm sure many of you will. Uh, so as we look at the fireworks um, and celebrate that, we are also reminded of that little votive candles in memory of our little saints who have sacrificed their lives for others. So we live in this tale of two kingdoms, kingdom of our world and kingdom of God. And we live in two calendars, according to two calendars. Um, and not that they are separated, but intermixed. Uh, we live in one story, but live in two kingdoms. Because uh, some Christian um, interpretation goes for the dualistic theology, thinking that, well, these two kingdoms are totally separate. We are called to live in only the spiritual kingdom, God's kingdom, and that is the real one, and the rest of it is just a fantasy. We don't really have to do anything with it. Um, but that such a dualistic attitude really separates ourselves from the world, and it is not healthy way because we inherit the Wesleyan theology which focuses both the personal holiness, our relationship with God, and social holiness, our engagement into the political world. And it goes all the way uh, from uh, even from uh, Augustine's theology in his book The City of God, which he wrote in the fifth century after the fall of Rome. Uh, can you imagine that shock? People thought the Roman Empire was the superpower, the only uh, empire in the world, and it, it crumbled down. Uh, and in that setting, uh, Augustine wrote about the city of God, saying that the, the kingdoms, the empires, will rise and fall and rise and fall. But in the midst of that, we live, we have another story, another kingdom, that's kingdom of God or city of God that is eternal. So the good news that we hear today is the kingdom of God, God's Basileia, has already arrived with Jesus, and it is still coming. It is not completely, perfectly with us, but it started with Jesus, and it is up to us to continue that movement because Basileia is bo both already and not yet. It's not completely here yet. It is both present reality and the future reality. It is in our hearts and it is in our society. And God's Basileia is not the heaven that we go after we die. It is what God brings to us today and God invites us to join. So that's how we are part of this tale of two kingdoms. And how will you share the good news of the kingdom of God here and now, because we know that when we share it, nobody will like it, right? The Luke story tells us there are people who will reject and they will not listen, who would uh, criticize us. No, not everybody will welcome. Yet for those who trust in the good news will live with hope. So how do we share this good news of kingdom, uh, God's Basileia? I think, first of all, we should... Uh, practice the kingdom values, to live with love, forgiveness, healing uh, spirit, and embracing everyone, and to be part of the change, the positive change for everyone, and share the mission and our community life in as much as possible. I'm wearing today, uh, this was the t-shirt from Bishop's Appeal for help with Ukraine, and all of you helped so much, and that was part of our annual conference giving to the total, uh, uh, total, the mission, the collection that we would give to Ukraine. And, you know, each one, what we can do each as individual can be small, but together we can do so much to make the change. And our youth group will be going on a youth, youth mission trip uh, uh, soon. And then 
through youth mission trip, uh, adults and youth members, they are sharing the good news. And I am so excited that there's a small group of us going to Korean mission trip next summer. And we'll be preparing for it the whole this year. And I'm excited about that opportunity. And we are, uh, this month, our uh, diversity and outreach committee is hosting uh, United Methodist Church's anti-racism theme. Uh, and that's why we have the banner out there. And you'll hear more about it uh, in a couple of Sundays from now. Uh, and that's all part of proclaiming God's Basileia today. So not everybody can do everything all at the same time together, right? But each one of us, everyone can do one thing to be part of uh, God's kingdom and to proclaim the good news of God's kingdom coming to us. What will you today? And through your action and through your uh, proclamation and witness, may God's kingdom come closer to us. Thanks be to God. Amen. And in our prayer time, uh, please know that your prayer requests are always um, received with love and care and compassion. So if you have any prayer requests to share, uh, please let us know and let us pray. Oh, gracious and loving God, we confess to you to live our life is not always simple. It comes with complications and complexity, and especially to follow your call to engage in our sociopolitical world can be very difficult. But at the same time, that's the way you call us to be part of that bigger vision, the dream that Jesus dreamed and the early church started. And we are so grateful that you call us to be part of that. So we pray that you will continue to strengthen us, inspire us, and help us to put aside all our personal needs or concerns or worries and embolden us with your courage, with your power, so that with everything that we do in our words, witness, mission work, community engagement, and everything that we do, that we may reflect your spirit in the world. We thank you for all your gifts, and we offer this prayer and all the prayers of our hearts in the name and in the spirit of Jesus. And we continue to pray in one voice as Jesus taught us. Loving creator, we honor you and we honor all that you have made. May we build your community here and now, rather than waiting for it to come down from above. Give us what we need for today and a hunger to see the world. Strengthen us for what lies ahead. Heal us from the hurts of the past. Give us courage to follow your call in this moment. For your love is the only power, the only home, the only honor we need in this world and in the world to come. Amen. And we gather around this table of love and grace and welcome. And this is what Jesus started and Jesus promised. Each time we gather around the table, Jesus is with us. So with Jesus' presence and God's love with us, uh, we give thanks to God. And remember that on the night before meeting with, G uh, meeting with death, Jesus took the bread, gave thanks to you, O God, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup the same way, gave thanks to you, and gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. 
Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So in remembrance of Jesus' love and Jesus' mission, we gather in this place and we ask your Holy Spirit be upon us and bless all our prayers and bless our communion. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, I would like to ask Nate to come forward. All are invited to come forward uh, to take communion. And we continue our practice of uh, sharing the little ones. So please come forward. Take one or more to share with others. God's table is open. So at this time, where we would normally pass the plate if we were back at the church, in the park, so we ask you, if you have not signed that attendance pad, raise your hand, find somebody, get a pad, and sign in. Okay. If you're watching at home, please sign in electronically. Let us know you watched. And 
if you still would like to give to our church, you can do it electronically. We have a QR code in the, in the bulletins. You can use your smartphone. It'll take you right to the link, or you can go to oncumc.com slash dot org, dot net, dot net, whatever we are, oncumc.net slash donate. I'm used to seeing it on the screen, so I don't have to memorize it. No screens today. This is, this is a lot. There we go. It's on the, it's on the bulletin, oncumc.net slash donate. Um, it, let us offer our gifts to God. Away for all the wars of violence against our enemy. Come heal our land with your own great river. Restore the family and make us one. one and there are several opportunities for us to sense the oneness in God. The first is that we have coffee fellowship with donuts so everybody is invited to join uh, back to the welcome center for coffee and donuts and next Sunday the youth mission tri uh, trip team is hosting a fundraiser brunch and it'll be pancakes and other good food. <laughs> so right after worship at 10 o'clock, we are invited back in the fellowship hall for this fundraiser brunch. And I hope everybody will join for that. And also another fundraiser for youth mission trip is to sign up for one hour to pray for uh, our youth mission team while the mission team is in the work. Uh, so mission team will be working for God and then we're supporting them. So uh, that information is in our e-news. So please look for it and sign up for your slot of one hour. And next Sunday, we'll have celebration of baptism for Josephine Falk, a little girl. Uh, and that's another opportunity for us to sense the oneness in one water of baptism. So we look forward to that and may God's blessings be upon all of us. 
It has been good to be together today, and with each act of love, we change the world. Let us, if you wish, rise and sing our final song. God is with us now. Thank you.